Okay, welcome Ooh. to uh, the recap of day number four. We've got a different format today. We're going to make it tighter. Um, I've actually just whipped through the video and I took out all the sort of counting waves and a few extra ones from the heats we saw yesterday. Obviously, we're talking about the PWA, the IWT World Wave Tour over in Chile. They got through to the uh, last 16 in the men and near enough the last eight in the women. There's a couple more heats to do in that quarter final. So we are onto the quarterfinals in the men and we're pretty much into the semi-finals in the women. So what I've done, like I said, you can see on your screen, I'm joined obviously by Paul Van Bellen. Hello everybody. Good, thanks Benny. Uh, this is amazing. We're going to just smash through this. Smash. Well, smash, hopefully. Smash. I want to make it a bit tighter because I looked at the recap yesterday and we'd like two hours. I'm thinking it's not much of a recap. <laughs> so let us know which format you like. We're experimenting a bit. This is obviously a bit more work to do it this way, but I think it's a better way where you guys can see the waves if you didn't tune into the whole live stream. So this is the first men's heat from yesterday, which they were already starting in a heat number six. So this is getting through to get to the final 16 riders. We had Marino Gill, obviously Pozo local, stepped it up last year, up in like second place in Pozo, really challenging, you know, Marsilio Brown, who ended up world champion. We've got Liam Dunkebeck, obviously son of Bjorn Dunkebeck. And then we've got local boy, Vicente Gonzalez. I think, did he come through the trials? I think he might have. So this was a really interesting heat, really tricky conditions yesterday. I'm going to let these kind of just play out um, as we look. You see this wave. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> that, that was, was the start of the heat. I mean, crazy. I might have another look at that because Vicente Gonzalez, he was actually on some of the better waves of this heat. Um, Liam Donkebeck, obviously, on that second set. And uh, he looked pretty good, I have to say. He looked, uh, he looked pretty in control. Marino Gill took a long time. Did you watch the heat yesterday? Yeah, no, I well, I did. I fast forwarded through it because, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I saw most of it, but I'm probably going to be catching up on a few details today. So, Actually, you know what? I think what we might do for the guys who haven't got much time, I'm going to round up what happened yesterday because maybe you're just in here to find out roughly what happened and then we'll go more into depth into each wave. So let me just run you through the results yesterday because we had three men's heats which was heat number six, heat number seven, heat number eight. This was to get into the uh, into the quarterfinals, so final 16. Marino Gill, Liam Dunkebeck, Vicente Gonzalez. In the end, Marino Gill did find that wave. So I don't want to spoil it too much, but he came through at the end, and it was Marino Gill and Liam Dunkebeck that went through. The next heat, we had Thomas Traversa, Diego Fabres, and the current tour leader, Bernd Rodiger. Now, Bernd Rodiger obviously won Japan, leading the tour. He was looking good, but he didn't find the waves today. And he is out. 17th place for him. So that's a big hit. He won't be leading the world tour after uh, the Chile event. So that's a big one. And Diego Fabres, local bloke, he is right through to the final 16, which is epic effort. Thomas Traversa already through, um, but didn't have a good one in Japan. So this will give you an idea of how this world title is shaping up early doors. It's quite exciting. Uh, and then the final heat for the men yesterday, which was the last one to get into the quarterfinals, Victor Fernandez, Julian Salman and Benjamin Fabres. So family, family ties there, I guess, to Diego Fabres. And it was very close. Julian Salman just did enough in the end. But Benjamin Fabres, as we'll go through his heats in a minute, had a sick, like, tail-up tacker. He was looking good, and he really pushed um, Julian Salmon hard. Victor Fernandez, though, will go on to it, but some slick goiters, really clean landing. He looked at home, actually, Victor. He's going to be a danger man. So, just to cap off, we're down to the men, quarterfinals. We've got Camille Juban, Marsilio Brown, Federico Mauricio, Miguel Chapuis. That's your first heat in the quarterfinals. Jules Donnell, Morgan Nero, Andres Tombar, and Alex Vargas. So two locals in that second quarterfinals. Really good showing from the locals. And then we've third one, we've got Philip Costa, Marino Gill, Diego Fabres, another local boy, and Julian Salmon in heat number three. And then rounding it off, the last of the quarterfinals coming up later on today, Victor Fernandez, Thomas Traversa, Antoine Martin, Liam Dunkerbeck. How's that? Some interesting yep. ones there, isn't that? Really interesting. Definitely. 
No, it's uh, it's been a pretty exciting uh, exciting day, and a few big names dropped, as we will see. Yeah. Well, what we should say is I was having a look at the overall world rankings. So after Japan, we've had one event. Bernd Rodiger was leading. He's out in 17th place. Marcelio yeah. Brown was second. He's still in. Victor Fernandez still in. So they've got a very good chance of maybe leading this world tour at the end of this event. Morgan Rowe finished fourth in Japan. He's still in. But then there's the interesting ones. Mark Paré, injured. Not there. He was in fifth in Japan. Takara Ishii, fifth in Japan. He's out early. Robbie Swift, he is out already. Finished seventh in Japan. Rui Nagoshi, he is out as well. He finished seventh in Japan. So you're like, oh, my life, there's some big exits. Thomas Traverso, who finished ninth in Japan, is in it. So he will probably go right up the rankings. Antoine Albert, he's not there in Chile. Marino Gill, he actually is through. So as you can see, it starts to get interesting. And we are going to see those world title points all change after this. And it's uh, already getting exciting. This is just the second wave event of the year. And this is why it's nice to see different conditions, different riders, local boys and girls obviously pushing through. Um, we all obviously sell the women yesterday. Again, I'm just going to run through just to keep you up to date. Uh, we didn't finish all of them, but we do already uh, have six riders in the top eight. We just wait to find out the final two. So yesterday, difficult conditions for the women, light wins. Uh, Justine was, Justina Schnally was a standout, I'd say, won her heat. She even won. She was even leading the heat. They cancelled as well. So I thought that was that was at least fair enough. Coco Vavo. Came through stronger in the second heat. Wasn't doing so good in the first one, but she came through and she all qualified. Maria Morales is out. Uh, Lena Erpenstein, big shout out to her. Sort of get a nice aerial in her heat and she is through to the final uh, eight riders. Uh, Sol Dietrich, she was just flying around the break. Mm. Like, now you're 14 years old and she took down a big name yesterday. She took down Sarah Hauser in that second heat. So that's a huge scalp for the 14-year-old. And she really had the right gear, planing around, getting good waves. Um, and then the, the last heat of the women's yesterday before the lights sort of stopped play and the wind dropped, uh, Lexia Kiefer, another young ripper, won her heat, 14.17 points. And then Pauline Katz taking down Maria Andres, big result there. Still yet to sell. Jane Seaman, Lisa Vim, uh, Viermeister, and uh, Maria Behrens. They'll be coming up later on today. So got some good matchups in that next round. Yeah. So there we go. Sorry, that, I'm just trying to say, trying to be a bit more punchy. We just wrapped okay. it up with guys that didn't watch the live stream. That's how we're looking. Today, we're going to be going on through the quarterfinals for the men and finish the quarterfinals for the women and semifinals and maybe even finals. So today is a big day. If you've got no win today, you're at home, get that live stream on this afternoon because I think we're going to see some really interesting stuff getting thrown down and the uh, forecast, I think, looks pretty good. Okay. Well, Benny, you're a pro, mate. You're a pro. And what sort of footage you got for us here, mate? Right. Let's have a look at the footage. So I, I've, this was a last minute decision to do this. So I've only gone through the men's heats, but I basically just ripped through them. Um, I've added, just took out all the faff in the middle and some of the bad, bad waves. Um, this is the only one with the glitch of the live stream. But this is the first heat. Liam Dunkebeck, Vicente Gonzalez, Marino Gill. Um, again, if you didn't watch it, I thought Vicente Gonzalez had a real shot at this. But uh, Marino Gill came back uh, pretty strong towards the end of the heat. Had some uh, had a big score, actually. It might have even been this one. He had like three aerials. Um, oh, no, that, this is one of the early waves. So Marino Gill left it pretty late. And I have to say, I thought this is Vicente Gonzalez. Check out the waves. Yeah. No to mass eye. Like, yeah. He just made a few I, mistakes. Yeah, I noticed a few uh, a few riders were struggling with the end sections as well. You know, the, it gets so hollow, the wave, that it's, uh, it was hard to deal with, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, he had two opportunities. That one could have been a big wave. And then his first wave, which we saw before where he crashed out, Ooh. both of those situations. If he'd have nailed those last sections, I think he takes down um, whoever was in second at the end, which might have been Liam Dunkerbeck. He would have, he would have maybe even won the heat, but he had the opportunity. So I think, I think Vicente will be a bit gutted because he did have the opportunities. Um, 
Marino was struggling to find the waves. He was, you know, making the most out of, you know, like this sort of stuff there when that late aerial, he, he really wasn't getting the run. And then he did find that sort of runner towards the end, which gave him, I think, a 6.5, which was the was the big difference maker. Yeah. No, it's interesting to see uh, him out there because I just have memories of him uh, absolutely going crazy in Pozo. So something a bit different, different challenge for him out here. Yeah. It looked tricky yesterday. For anyone who didn't watch the live stream, very tricky riding. Uh, we're going to come on to the burnt Rodiger heat in a, a bit because we're kind of used to him calling the waves from the heavens. And it, it mm. just didn't happen for him yesterday. You know, he was out there waiting, doing his normal thing. And usually he seems to get, you know, something happening, but he just couldn't get it going yesterday. Didn't have many opportunities. Again, yeah. Vince Vicente, he was on. Look at the, the waves he was on. He was finding all the bombs. But... Um, Few of them just couldn't finish them. No, great sailing from everyone. It looked like super tricky conditions. Yeah, it was only two point six uh, points behind Liam in the end. It did come second, and uh, Marino did end up winning. So, yeah, Marino's. I think this could be the wave. So you know, turn to start things off, then like a kind of pretty straight air down the down the face, sort of check turn at the top to speed up another aerial down the bottom and then i think another little late hit at the end and then down that's but that scored i mean 6.3 was it yeah which is a big score isn't it big mm, score yeah three straight air it's not not super burnt but got a good length for ride i i mm. when i look at some of the early waves from vicente i thought that was pretty generous i would say but a good wave for what we saw but yeah. obviously Straighter air is definitely easier than the the up and under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was tricky, tricky conditions. So maybe the judges were being a bit uh, lenient uh, on some of the waves. Yeah. So but, that's uh, the score from round eight. Marino Gill won it. He got the his first wave of the day was a four nine three, and then that six three zero at the end with the aerials. Uh, Liam Dunkerbeck second five four seven was his counting wave, and a five one seven at the end. You know, and in the end, if you look at Vicente Gonzalez's score, it's like a 407 and a 393. It's like, it, it, when you watch the heat, I didn't feel that he was that far back. But those two mistakes on those early waves, I think really cost him because he definitely, he had the wave selection sorted. He just couldn't get that finishing move. And that's very important, I think, for the judges. You know, you leave that wave with a, with a high impression. So interesting. Yep. Oh, this one was an interesting one, wasn't it? Bant, yeah, who you would normally think would uh, be a shoe in to get through, was struggling a little bit in this heat. Yeah, so let, let's just start this again. So this is Thomas Traversa, Bernd Rodiger, and Diego Fabres. Obviously, Bernd Rodiger leading the world tour coming into Chile. Obviously, we know him for starboard tack. I was kind of thinking maybe Port Tack's not his thing, but actually actually watching him ride, I'm realising he knows what he's doing. And this was his opening scoring wave. And this looked pretty cool, but he just couldn't, it didn't open up for him. So sort of sets himself up, gets a real kind of up and over aerial and then gets a bit stuck and he can't get out. And you're like, ooh. That was a 5-2-7. Yeah. And I think that might have been mm. his best scoring wave of the whole heat. Bear in mind, these are 27 minute heats, so long heats, but the, the sets would look difficult to find yesterday. And this heat, yeah. especially it was, um, but then we've got Diego Fabres. He was, he seemed to be just finding lots of action. Obviously Thomas Traversa in this one, um, no surprise he was finding a lot, but he, he made some mistakes as well. Uh, you know, you watch this video, you realise that was a nice hit, like up and under that one. But then when you get those up and unders, you struggle to make the sections. Mm. And um, But he had so many waves traverse it in this. I, I just seem to remember him being on lots of wave. I haven't put them all in this video. Um, yeah. Well, he had, he, nine, he, he had nine waves to Diego's five to Bant's four. So he Thomas had more than nine, double. okay. I was yeah. going to say, I remember watching it thinking, Jesus, he's on lots. But he made made mistakes. But I think that might have been the way to do it yesterday. Instead mm. of being patient and waiting, because even when you waited, you didn't really know if it was going to be a good one or if you were going to make what you had in mind happen. 
you know, whereas yeah. Thomas kind of went with the scattergun approach and just going on everything and, yeah. you know, something Hope will stick. Basically. Yeah, for sure. Keep in mind that uh, the difference in score between Thomas and first and Bant and third was only 1.07. So yeah. it was a very tight heat in the end. Oh, it, was, it was close. Like I said, Bert yeah. was very selective. He, he, he really was. He was waiting and waiting. And then you could see towards the end, he was like, okay, I, I've got to go for something here because it's not working. I, I texted Bant and said, oh, tough conditions. And he just replied. He was replied, yep, I could have sailed them way better. Yeah. So, yeah, he was... like you said, I think you look back in this heat, and he would obviously it's easy in hindsight, but you, I think he would choose different tactics, you know. And like I said, I, I believe the way it was yesterday, I think it was difficult to pick good waves just from picking them. Yeah. See, this this was a big this was a big wave for Fabrice there. If you that look at sick. that, uh, let's have another look at that. I mean, he he nailed that thing. That was a maybe a five five three. That yeah, Burn, biggest... Burn got closed out here ahead of him, and then Fabrice is coming in behind, and he just got a good run. And again, like I said, finished the wave strong with the kind of big punting air, and you know shows a lot of speed down the line. Big punting air to start with, and then kind of like at the high line to get the speed for the last one, and then it explodes on the takeoff. So essentially, two aerials, which again, looking from it, it's easier, but I believe that's easier than a turn. The turns. Yeah, you've got to slow down because you're doing more, especially an aggressive turn. Yeah, and how hollow is the wave? You do a turn and you sort of gets hung up in the lip, and then you've got no chance to get down the line. So they were obviously rewarding uh, aerials. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So that, this was you could see. I only put this clip in because you could kind of see how it was all so funky. There's two waves colliding, mm. and if you mm. didn't make that double section, it was like end of the road. Yep. That was I'm nice. wondering. I'm wondering if that that convergence of waves is that because of the islands? You know, does do the yeah, waves it's kind of like two swells coming? Yeah, either mm. side maybe. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, Tom is through in that heat, and so is Diego. So unfortunately for Bant, he exits, which will make it very interesting at the end of the event with all the rankings, as you said, Benny. There's going to be a few changes yeah. there, and that will be very interesting. Yeah, he could have even come down. Yeah, no, he'd already kind of got it wrapped up. Burt's wave before was super nice. Had some close hits, very close together, but obviously length of the wave was small. I thought yeah. it was kind of pretty cool the way he, like, um, rode it. Um, mm -hmm. But again, Fabrice was getting longer rides, a little bit more straighter, and then sort of having some punts uh, towards yeah. the end. Yeah, no, really. Yeah, he took some risk. He took some risk, didn't he? I guess he had to, again, when you're in a heat with uh, Thomas and... Uh... I think he and tried bands. a rotation here, Burn, but just couldn't find the section for it. And you, yeah. you, at that point, when I was watching live, I was thinking, yeah, it's, mm. it's kind of done. At two minutes, he didn't really have a chance to get back out. Um, yeah, and then it was, and then it was all over. So well sailed. I got to say, you know, Diego Fabres has just took down the current tour leader. I mean, that mm. feels pretty good, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's so cool. But you can see Traversa, well, you know, wasn't it like he was landing all his waves? And I think that kind of it's, scattergun uh, approach, you know, it, it's something, like I said, had to stick at the end. You only need two waves. And he just went down the, right, I'm going to keep busy. Maybe one of these ones is going to sit upright. And, and, it, and that's, I think the way it was looking yesterday, in hindsight, that would have been maybe the way to go. Because there was no guarantees if you waited and waited and got a set yeah. wave, it would be good. It could shut you down really quickly. And then all yep. that time, you know, you didn't really gain anything. Yeah. No, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the tactic you take at a wave like this. Yeah, as you said, if you sit back, you might find that uh, the waves don't come that you're looking for. So you've just got to just get a higher wave count, I guess. Yeah. But it's, like, it's tricky, as you, as yeah. you said, very close at the end. You know, just yeah. one point really separating all three riders. Uh, but like I say, in the end, Thomas Traversa gets through to the final 16 and Diego Fabres uh, mm. well sailed. Cool. Well done. Um, so next heat. Yeah, next heat was the was the last heat 
uh, if I remember rightly. Yeah, of the, of the uh, rounds. It's going to be three rounds. That's right, yes. Yeah, three rounds. So Julian Salmon, who has looked very good in the bigger stuff and the more connecting stuff. Uh, Benjamin Fabres, who I've seen in the early rounds, he obviously, I'm, I'm sure he's a relation, brother or something, some sort of family member to the other Fabres, unless it's like the Jones or the Smith of Chile. Uh, but I'm, I think they might be related. Uh, and then we've got, uh, obviously, Victor Fernandez, who has also looked very good in this early round. So not an easy heat, this. Um, but I have to say, Victor, he looked good. He had, uh, he was, you know, linking stuff together. A very small compared to the other days. You can see quite confused, the, yeah. the water. So great to see Victor uh, excelling because... Uh... Yeah, he's uh, he's. This is going to be good for his uh, confidence, and great to see him still up there. Yeah, it's been, and, it's been so long Julian time. really did sort of manufacture, for want of a better word, some some scores here. He didn't quite get the wave picks that we used to see in him, but even yeah. on the smaller stuff, he was just making it happen. Um, and you'll see in a minute on some of these ways. But like I say, Benjamin Fabris, keep your eye out for this, like tail high tacker he had in this heat you know late hit there he looks like he's got a really good style i uh, i like this guy's style again he went out in the end but i thought he's got some nice turns and just maybe not on this way in particular but later on you can see he's definitely got the skills yeah and victor fernandez like smooth as ever just waiting for those little sections you know just so smooth and so consistent so just plonked in some pretty decent scores early on. And then, as we'll see, goes for the goiter and uh, absolutely nailed it. I think one of the biggest scores of the day on the waves for Victor Fernandez. And he looks comfortable. He looks yep. uh, he definitely looks comfortable. Definitely curious to see how far Julian's going to get in this event because uh, he's on a bit of a run at the moment. He came second in this heat, but uh, he, is in, he is on form, especially yeah, in this sort of wave. Yeah, that was like one of the small ways, but you could see he really worked everything there. Two good turns, good aerial, mm. you know, not a big wave, but the judges are going to struggle to not score him well on, on something like that because he's really putting in that extra bit of effort. And that's yeah. what's the hard thing. Just going down the wave and riding it isn't necessarily the hardest, but those extra bit of energy you put into the turns is what gets real points. It's a tricky wave, isn't it? Because it's either kind of fat – or it just just drains basically, and you're just uh, trying to top turn into a into a there's, barrel there's section. A lot of time you see the boys just end up with no power, and they're up mm. like on this, you know, basically the bottom dropping out of the wave, and you've got nothing to do. You've got the best guys in the world, and you can see they're struggling to just even yeah. ride out of some of this stuff. Yeah, you know. Also, when it's small, to get your timing right is sometimes harder, isn't it? Than when it's bigger, you got a bit more time. Yeah. When it's small, it just really jacks up quick. And as uh, the boys were saying yesterday, you've got to have a board that kind of fits in the lip. There was that goiter from yeah. uh, Victor. Apparently, the beach went sort of crazy when he landed that. And that you know, he already had some kind of counting waves in the bag for that heat, smaller heat. Mm -hmm. This one, so he knows he needs to up the level. And we know how good he is at, at maneuvers. But that that goiter was was super clean, and that's what bagged him the the sort of big points. Quite a big looking sail he's on as well. It looks like it's at least a five two, five three, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is it. So this is Benjamin Fabris. I could have scored him more for this. Check this tacker. I'll have to watch it again because obviously when you watch it live, it's never as easy, and that's what the judges are dealing with. But you know, okay, so it was a setup. But this tacker, I thought that's mm, pretty sick. Yeah, like, that's like yeah. Jager style tacker, isn't it? Tail mm. sort of high wrapping it around maybe that you know he needed a better finish he probably needed something else on the end of it really L uh, looking at it yeah. back now i can see why he maybe didn't get the the big points the other teams yeah. on that wave weren't quite you know giving him what he needed but uh still um i mean solid effort you've got to say and a, a very close heat for all kind of riders involved yep. in this one but it was a busy heat again yeah, and if he was, if Benjamin was in a uh, a different heat, he may have got through. It was a fairly, yeah, you know, high performance heat in the end, wasn't it? For all of them, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. Julian Salmon, Victor Fernandez have kind of been 
on my radar for doing well. I think they've, they've got that consistent style. They've got the turns like different to each other, I suppose. I love Julian's turns. And again, depending on how the judges are going to go, um, you've got to be able to mix it up. And I think just having those turns is maybe the bit of an X factor because I haven't seen so many people doing big turns. You know, oh, sick. Oh, yeah. I was unlucky for mm. going for that extra goiter. You know, that's uh, we're definitely going to see more of that, I think, as we get to the later round because we're going to need to stand out. Airs and, you know, a few half turns is not going to be where the big money is. You know, the big money is the proper late big spray turns, you know, where you're risking it to get stuck behind the section. That's, I think, what the judges are going to reward and obviously big manoeuvres. And this was yep. one of the late aerials. He was hunting for this aerial, Julian, towards the end. Look at this explode on the landed world. Well <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah it was like a, like i said this heat i like i just cut out the chaff and you could see in the early heats less waves as we get to traverse the heat and you get to this heat there was definitely more action going on it, you know it felt almost like the heat was i don't say too long but you know when you condense it everything gets a little bit more tense and you know it's it's not like a free sailing session um, yep. You know, because obviously the tense bit is right at the end of the heat when the scores are coming in and one person needs one wave of a five to make it or something like this. So, um, yeah. Phil Phil makes a good point here. He says that the low tide makes the waves a bit steeper and and uh, not last so long. So the low tide today is at 3.30, so there will be a longer time we have for lower water. So there's going to like be, it. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be similar sort of conditions for the uh, the finals by the looks of it. Yeah, you could see the sand yesterday. It looked a lot meaner. Like I say, when you've got Traverser and these type of guys getting smashed, you know, that's not normal. These guys, these guys can ride nearly anything. So I always think when you see that, you know, especially Thomas Traverser getting smashed and, and mistiming stuff or getting it just sucked up from underneath him, you know it's difficult mm -hmm. to read. Um, and I think it also shows when you see the locals going through heats, that was a nice sort of almost like a floater off, off the top from uh, Fabrice. Again, a couple of this, if he'd have just got one that kind of ran a bit better for him, he might be in the next round. But unfortunately, uh, that's the last we're going to see of uh, Benjamin Fabrice. He had a real good go at it mm. towards the end, though. You know, he was trying to make it happen. But yeah, difficult, very difficult conditions. So yeah, that was it for the three uh, the three men's heats. Like I said, I'm sorry, I only had time to kind of run through them very quickly. If excellent. you like this type of format where we've just kind of condensed it down, let me know because it is a bit of work. So if it's not going, if it's like, yeah, yeah, it's the same, don't worry, you don't have to do it, then okay, fine. But it, it is possible. I have to download the whole live stream and then basically chop through the heats. In an ideal world, we'd have the full quality HD footage straight off the camera. It's edited, and then we can dissect it. But obviously, it's not so easy to to do no. that. No, um, it's a lot of time. So yeah, this I mean, this heat's still going. Like I said, I just pulled out the stuff. So there's a lot of heat going down here. A lot of action. This was, I think, no. Julian's last wave. Oh, that was a good set. You can see it oh, just, it's just still not oh, doing what you want. It to do, one it? behind. Yeah, difficult. Very difficult. This is Victor's, I think, last wave. And then oh. again, stuck on the top, just wow. like oh. wall riding. That's hard. That's hard to ride. Wow. Yeah, very, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. That was the result. So, oh, no, I'll put the yeah. same one in. Oh, there you go. That's what happens when you're tired. <laughs> That's the Merino yeah. Gilly. Yeah, I can bring this one up. There you go. There's the result. Yeah, Victor, yeah, Victor Fernandez. So, I mean, he had so many waves, eight waves. And Julian had like seven waves. Ben, Benjamin Fabris, you know, seven waves, uh, which is interesting because then when they went into the women's after this, um, they were struggling to even move. You know, they actually cancelled the heat because there was no wind, which was which was pretty interesting. So what we'll do, we'll just go through a few comments now. I'm just going to catch up with what you guys have, uh, are thinking about all that. Um, yeah, you touched on the low tide. Did you? Yeah. From yep. Phil. Yeah. I mean, it looked it looked pretty crazy yesterday. Um, we've got nice coverage from Kurt. What's this? Uh, Bill says Traversa and later Fernandez both got busy early on building a house with whatever there was. 
sometimes it was a risky short break ride. I gotta say, you never know. And in my experience from doing these heats, if the wind's up and down as well, if you've got wind and you rack in some early wave rides, you don't know what's going to happen at the end of the heat. The wind could drop and doesn't give you those opportunities. And then you're sitting on what might be average scores at the beginning of the heat, but sometimes they can turn into pretty good scores if conditions get worse. Obviously can have uh, different effects as well. Um, We've got a comment here from uh, from Axel saying, uh, I do like enjoy watching you guys, although he enjoys the quicker run through. So there's a vote for that, Ben. Yeah, I think so. I think it's better. Like I said, you, if you've watched the live stream, we're not going to go too much longer than this. Um, I, I haven't done the women's highlight videos, but like I said, I've run through the scores already. If we do like this, I will try and go back through the women's uh, you know, quarterfinals tomorrow because – well, we'll see what happens today, because if we get the finals, then we'll go through from the semifinals and we'll do a better one. I'll make it a little bit more cleaner. Uh, but, yeah, it's setting up good today. I see Bill says, uh, Winguru, what's he say? Winguru has the swell going up to 2.6 metres today and 15 or 16 seconds. That probably is going to be pretty fruity um, mm -hmm. and maybe a bit windier. So okay. this could be very, very interesting. Um, like I said, we're set up for the women to get their finals done today. We're set up for the men if they start early enough. Yesterday, it was a very late start. I think it was like four o'clock local time. So we're hoping maybe they get going at 2, 1.30 local time over there. And that would mean they could possibly run all the way through to the finals. So um, today could be an absolute banger Ooh. excited Look to it, Benny. very yeah. yeah very much very okay much, I think. who's your bets on are they still on the same people uh i said thomas traversal was a uh, the pro tip and my outsider who was my outsider my goodness oh it was alice vargas yes um solid we didn't see him sail yesterday yeah still in the mix yeah look it's I'm going to stick with that because that seems like a sensible choice as an outsider. And the women, I said Justina, didn't I? I think I said Justina mm -hmm. and um, who did I say? Oh, and I said Sol as an outsider. So she my two, all my, yeah, my picks uh, got through. So that's cool. And what about yourself, Any? Well, in the women, I think I'm, I'm going to go with the experience of Jane Seaman that's um, right. in the biggest half and Lena Erpenstein. They were the two I was thinking and actually Lena I thought she sailed good yesterday had a good aerial and I think what we're going to need to see I think from the women just watching as an overall view is yes you've got to pick the right waves but the women are definitely going to get rewarded for the meaty hits because they're the danger ones you know picking a good wave and riding it well is going to be the safer option but I think the big points are going to come from those late hits and I see Lena Erpenstein hitting it late mm. Jane yep. Seaman, I know, hits it late. She's used to Margie's, you know, she's used to some pretty heavy lips. So I would be betting on them, but I think you've got some good choices as well. And like I said, when we do this, we're not saying everyone else has not got a chance. Everyone's got a chance. If they've made it to the final eight, all bets are off. But they would be my picks, I think, looking at what I've seen so far. Um, in the men, again, a very, a very difficult um, a pick. But if I look at who's still in, you know, I like Brown, but he's leading – you know, he's probably going to be leading the world tour. Well, I actually know because Victor's still there. So who am I seeing? Yeah, Costa. You said Costa, didn't you? I think mm -hmm. he looks pretty good. I think Fernandez has got a chance. I think, you know, I think he's been the forgotten man. You know, Paré kind of stole his thunder a bit. Didn't have a great year last year. You know, that whole sponsorship switch with Paré and everyone's kind of, you know, basically going, why have you kept Victor? And I think he's probably thought, you know what? <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> I've still got some skills here. And, you know, what we saw in Japan, he could be leading this world title race after here in Chile. He lives low. You know, he's lived. He's got a house on that beach, like one of those cool houses on the back. He owns one of them. So he's he's got the experience. He's got the temperament. We know he can win. I'd be thinking, yeah. And I, I sound stupid. He's an outside bet, but he's not. Obviously, he's bloody world champ. But I would say him. And I'd like to see. I'd like to see some of the locals do good. I think they've got a chance. I think you've got a good one there with Vargas. I think he's looked very good wave selection. I think, like you say, Tom Traversa. But I'm thinking. I, I like. Uh, he's in a bad heat though. Antoine Martin. He's going against Thomas Traversa and Victor Fernandez. But Antoine Martin's kind of danger man. 
Yeah, of course. He yeah, always Julian, is. Julian Salmon. I'm going to and stick with you. I'm sticking with Julian Salmon and yep. uh, Brown. I'd be happy to see Julian Salmon get up. What do you reckon, Benny? Do we wrap it up? Because that way we. Yep. Uh, I think that's it. We're going to, like I said, we're trying to do it quickly. It's meant to be a recap. We went too crazy yesterday. If we do get interviews, if we do hear from over in Chile, yes, we'll be adding those interviews on the end of this little roundup. But the idea of this roundup was literally just for the people who didn't watch the live stream to understand what was happening without having to plod all the way through it. So that's yep. it. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, cheers, Paul. Well done, Benny. It's success. That's the shortest podcast we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> all right well all stay right. tuned to the live stream today guys i think it's going to be a banger so get tuned in that's where the proper action is and we'll be back here tomorrow to kind of give you this little overview hopefully and we have a new world title leader we have event winners everything's going to be going on so see you then perfect see you guys bye <laughs>